Saturday, August 22nd, 7.42 p.m. After a long day at work at Tesla, Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, and the richest person in the world, decides to retire early to his desk. He has to finally make his biggest decision of his life. It is 2008 and Tesla is not going well. The early Tesla roaster is having quality problems and the company is losing millions of dollars each month, facing serious bankruptcy. And SpaceX, his rocket company, just had its consecutive third failure. The Falcon 1 was not able to get into orbit, blowing up for the third time. And at the same year, there was a Great Recession, the global financial crisis. And to make matters worse, Elon was also going through a divorce with his long-term partner. With all of this going on, Elon Musk had to make the final decision. He had two possible choices. Like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced in life was in 2008. I think I had uh, maybe $30 million left, $30 or $40 million left in 2008. And I had two choices. I could put it all into one company and then the other company would definitely die or split it between the two companies. And but if I split it between the two companies, then both might die. After a lot of thought into this difficult decision, Elon Musk couldn't bring himself to decide only in one company because of how much both matter to him and the future. So he finally decided to split the money between the two companies. So as we can see, every decision we make determine our future. Imagine if Elon would have put all the money into Tesla and let SpaceX die. I don't think we would have orbital reusable rockets at this point of time. And I certainly know that if SpaceX would have died, humanity wouldn't get to Mars before 2030. Thanks to the most advanced and powerful spaceship they are developing. The quality of our decisions determine the quality of our life, and we face a lot of decisions every day. Elon Musk only had two choices, and it was a very hard decision, a decision that even determined the future of human race. But it was a very simple decision, he only had two possible choices. But what happens now if we have almost endless choices to make a decision? Does it help? Will having more options to choose from help you make a better decision? You could say that with hundreds or even thousands of possible choices, we will not be limited and it will be more liberating, right? Right? Well, for example, as you you can see, at your local supermarket there are more than 50,000 items. You have there more than 40 different varieties and brands of milk to choose from, more than 300 varieties of cookies, crackers and cereals, more than 30 choices of toothpaste, coincidentally every single one saying that their brand is the best one, and that is only physically, and in your local small supermarket. Imagine how many choices you have online. My problem when I load up YouTube on my TV is that there's too many videos I want to watch. It's, it's so hard at this point. For me, I don't know if other people have this problem, like the algorithm's getting so good that I think they need to serve less videos because I don't, it stresses me out. I'm like, like, which one do I pick? I want to watch them all. And the same happens when we're trying to find a movie to watch on Netflix or when we're deciding which book to read next or even what to do next. We all have endless possibilities. On education, you also have lots of choices. My local university offers more than 60 degrees and the big universities will offer you more than 200 degrees with hundreds and hundreds of courses to choose from. And after you graduate college, you can work almost at any job from all the possible industries. You can be an architect, an electrical engineer, software developer, high school teacher, college professor, politician, a lawyer, physical therapist, a doctor, biotechnologist, psychologist, a dentist, you name it. Or obviously, like some people did in the past, you have also the choice to drop out of university, to pursue entrepreneurship, to turn that vision that you have lying in your head of how things should be into reality. And finally, with the rise of online dating apps, you have on your fingertips hundreds upon hundreds of men and women that you can date that are close to your area. And because of that abundance of choice and the fear of committing, you could be jumping from shallow, intimate relationship to another without ever forming that amazing long-term, meaningful relationship with your partner. <laughs> endless choices, endless opportunities, what could possibly go wrong? Indecision, regret, analysis paralysis, unhappiness, disappointment, and overall worst quality decisions. These are just some of the consequences of having cover loads of choices when making decisions. And there even have been studies that showed a correlation of having more choices to clinical depression. What is the disconnect here? What is the root cause of this problem? You could say that the reason that overload of choices happens is because we are all different. You're very different than me, you are very different than your parents, friends, peers, and whoever you admire. Every human being is unique, and this uniqueness is marked genetically in our DNA. As Robert Greene says in his book Mastery, we are a one-time phenomenon in the universe. Our exact genetic makeup has never occurred before, and it will never be repeated. And this is good. This is how we can explain that everyone in this earth have different interests, different priorities, and different passions and visions for the future. We obviously need variety of choice in order to be the authors of our life. Instead of living life in a passive mode, 
constantly reacting, doing what society and the people around us choose for us. We need to be independent thinkers, deciding what we truly want in order to be happy and live a meaningful life. If we wouldn't have these choices, we would be miserable and live a stupid life. But the thing is, do you think these endless choices are helping you make better decisions and feel better afterwards? This paradox of choice is a big real thing. Is the problem the increasing numbers of choices and the possibilities that we are facing nowadays? Or is it our inability to handle them? Because I said earlier, whether we are buying milk, a pair of jeans, a cup of coffee, choosing which degree to study, whatever decision both big and small have become increasingly complex because of the overwhelming abundance of choice with which we are presented. And if you really look at it, you will find that it has been this way since the dawn of civilization. Truth is, this is nothing new. Just like we later see, our ancestors also had to deal with this overload of choices when they were hunting. Although this is nothing new, you and I are facing its consequences more than ever. As it turns out, this is a huge problem and needs to be handled properly or we can face a dead end. Because again, the quality of our decisions determine the quality of our lives, of our future. And if we get analysis paralysis from trivial choices, we won't be able to make good decisions on the few important things that matter the most, like our work, our intimate relationship, and our future. So let's jump into this journey and understand how this paradox of choice works and how to implement the solution for this big problem or else we won't make good decisions, we will face its consequences and ultimately live a miserable life, a life not worth living.